Coming up in the next segment, I'm going to read over some of these comments on Infowars.com in an article Paul Watson's written about a new executive order by Obama to detain anybody that has a cough. These commenters just say it a lot better than I can. But right now, and into the next segment, I want to get your take on Ebola. I mean, is it hype or, or are you concerned about it? I, I think it's a little of both. Garrett in Missouri, you're on the air. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, how you doing, Alex? I'm a first-time caller. I'm all right, brother. Go ahead. Yeah, I got two main things here. I mean, uh, there's been a lot of top medical professionals say that in today's times, we're a lot more vulnerable for a pandemic to break out due to the drug-resistant bacteria, due to the mass amounts of antibiotics being put out. I have and due to the fact that sanitary conditions are going down in the country and the borders are wide open. Yeah, and also, the, right now, there's two American medical missionaries that have Ebola positive and are being taken to Atlanta and Maury University Hospital. And if I'm not mistaken, isn't Atlanta the uh, head of the CDC as well? Yeah, that's where the Centers for Disease Control are. There's no mistake they're being brought to Atlanta. But the propagandists, they keep on putting out stuff like, well, we're, they're specially treated for this type of... Uh, infection and it's all safe and dandy for them to come over here well whenever top medical professionals already say that all this is going on due to the amount of flights going on and they're purposely bringing them to the u.s if one doctor gets it and goes home and spreads it to two other more people it could just break out like crazy well exactly but i was about to say they're taking them to basically a bioweapons wing lab all the bioweapons labs here because they're illegal are called bioweapons research so they're not illegal and they're getting, they're going to get blood cultures, you name it, uh, and uh, you know either try to see exactly why it appears to be getting more uh, transmittable, stronger, more resilient, or they might be wanting to do tests on to see how their baby's grown because the CDC has just been involved in all sorts of secret testing. They're the folks that like to you know shoot blacks up with syphilis, so uh, and the folks that like to cover up what what's happening with anthrax attacks. So we don't really know, in my view, exactly what's going on. This is definitely the biggest Ebola outbreak in history. And again, Ebola only emerged the last 30 years and has a lot of evidence connecting it to being a bioweapon, a zoological uh, ape virus uh, that was souped up. But great points, Garrett. We'll continue to watch it. They're also taking people to Germany that have it. Uh, and that's, again, because they, they want to study them. They're on special aircraft, sealed. They've got special suits on. They're decontaminating. But still, a lot of healthcare workers have still gotten it. It's a very serious virus, uh, especially if it ever goes airborne. You're looking at billions dead. That's the estimates out there by the UN. Billions dead. Let's 90% plus die when you get it. Uh, Mike in Louisiana. So it is a serious situation, folks. Anyway, you slice it. Mike, thanks for holding. You're on the air. Yes, Alex, this is Frank, your info warrior wagon in New Orleans. Uh, I got a comment on the Ebola situation, but also you should know, if you're not aware of it already, uh, Richard Gage was on C-SPAN this morning on the last segment. It was a magnificent appearance for him, and you should link to it. I was absolutely beside myself that C-SPAN would have him on. It was excellent. As far as the, the uh, Ebola goes, uh, this, to me, looks like the full horsemen of apocalypse. We got war, famine, disease, and pestilence heading straight at us. Uh, wars and rumors of wars. So this is no surprise at this time in this uh, of our history that this is going on and uh, how much of it is a hoax i don't think so uh, a segment of it but we these things are real Incidentally, we have run the July special. It's going to end today. So by uh, August 2nd, it is uh, August 1st already. Uh, you will not be able to get the 5.3 months free. That's what the discount comes out to. When you sign up for a year to see the nightly news, my documentaries, and so much more, you can get five plus months off the yearly subscription. Or you can always get a month to month $5.95. Each membership is 11 people.
11 people can use each membership. Again, prisonplanet.tv, infowarsnews.com. And we have special live reports, expanded reports after the news airs each night. And you are literally not just getting hardcore information that you can share with friends and family and download and share in HD. You're also funding the entire media operation, the syndicated radio show, the documentary films, the magazine, the special reports, the live event coverage, everything we're doing here at the Infowars.com studios in Austin, Texas. Ken in South Carolina, thanks for holding her on the air. Hey, Alex, I wanted to weigh in. I think you're absolutely right about the hype around Ebola. Um, and it concerns me because South Carolina, the state that put a law in that you can't take our guns in case of an emergency, is also the state that has a quarantine law already on the books. And it kicks in the moment Obama and the CDC starts talking about a vaccination for Ebola, I start getting nervous. And... That's because we already have a law that says if we don't take a mandatory vaccine, they can lock us up and throw away the key. And people aren't going to believe me, especially in South Carolina, but I'm speaking to the South Carolina listeners that they attack this ahead of time. It's in Title 44, Chapter 4, Articles 510 and 530. And if you'll indulge me, I'll read the first two lines of 530. Yes, During go ahead. During a public emergency, health emergency, DHEC, Department of Health and Environmental Control, may isolate or quarantine an individual or groups of individuals. This includes individuals or groups who have not been vaccinated, treated, tested, or examined pursuant to sections 444-510. So they literally, those of us that are educated, you know, I, I'm a marine, marine biologist as well as a minister, and I'm not going to ever take a vaccine again because I know what's in them. And so, Alex, they're saying if we don't take the vaccine to lock us up, but if the vaccines are this silver magic bullet that, you know, does away with it and protects everybody that takes it, why would they have to lock us up? We would only be endangering ourselves by not taking it. So th this is cause for concern in South Carolina because it doesn't matter what Obama does. We already have this law in there, and if they can hype up, an Ebola outbreak, when we already have flesh-eating bacteria in most of our hospitals in the state. I mean, my friend's brother-in-law, I mean, mother-in-law died of flesh-eating bacteria that was contracted from the ER. It appears to be in all of our hospitals. You don't hear a word about that. But Ebola? We're worried about Ebola and the outbreak monkey? Yes, uh, on the scale, Ebola compared to all the drug-resistant bacteria is nothing. And Obama signed an executive order just last night to allow detention of Americans with any respiratory illness. That's the big issue. Now it's not Ebola or Black Plague. It's if you've got any respiratory illness, we can just lock you up and forcibly inoculate you. Uh, this is the revised list of quarantine communicable diseases amends executive order 13,295 put in by Bush in April of 2003. And this is the perfect type cover to sell this. And as you said, uh, you know, the, the media is saying, oh, look at this doctor. And I agree they have courage to be over there and are heroes. But this doctor didn't want the spirit experimental vaccine. He offered it to the co-worker because it was only enough for one person. Well, uh, those, those vaccines are very dangerous. So these will be experimental. And so they are moving towards forced inoculation, and I think it's all part of the backdrop of fear. Great point, Ken. But that article's on Infowars.com. You can read the whole executive order. Uh, Obama is really expanding it. I should have been talking about this for three hours. That is sensationally scary. That if you have a respiratory problem, they can lock you up. Anything. Oh, you, you coughed. Bye-bye. Judy in Florida, what's your take on this? Yeah, I'm, I'm really quite alarmed at um, just the attitudes of people that I've talked to recently. Uh, I'm talking about just Americans in general. I'm, I, I believe that Europeans and just other nations are, are looking at Americans thinking, what are, what are you thinking, if anything? But I, I don't know if it's fear, stupidity, um, complicity, or, or what it is. But it's like there's this acceptance of everything that's occurring, and it's, 
it's such lawlessness and it's so wide open. And, you know, I know that um, recently Bill Still, the economist, had mentioned a city by name where my daughter lives. And she lives in a separate state than me where the MS-13 gang members um, are, you know, the, the police are trying to deal with them. And that hits really close to home with me. And I, I talked to a friend recently who... She, she's really intelligent. And Hold she, on, I'm going to come know. back to you. I'm going to come back to you, Judy. Judy, uh, finishing up your point on Ebola and the open borders. Uh, go ahead, Judy, from Florida. Sure. Um, what I was about to say is that there is a friend of mine that actually chastised me when uh, I had talked about these people coming in as being illegal. She said, calling them illegal is dehumanizing. And I'm going, well, no, you cannot waltz into other nations and just ask to be put on their welfare rolls and, and ask for special services and everything. I said, this is actually detrimental to the United States because we're basically a bankrupt country. Well, yeah, look but at the beauty like of political correctness. You can't go to Mexico or China and get free health care and all this stuff and show up with your baby nine months pregnant and have it two weeks later and it's all paid for and you get to stay there. No one else does this. We're a joke. And then all the politically correct people, black, white, Hispanic, Asian, doesn't matter, go, we'll use whatever word. And Michelle Obama says, don't use the word bossy. That's against women. I mean, this is mind control telling us how to talk, telling us what to do. You're saying you're not a citizen when you say you can't call someone else a non-citizen. Okay? I mean, this is crazy town. And, but, but this is how pliable and gullible this country is. This country is, is, is just full of chumps. Judy, I appreciate your call. It makes me want to throw up. Amen. <laughs> what is your take? I mean, and we're going back to the calls here. What is your take specifically on all these illegals getting everything free and the rest of it, and veterans and citizens can't get jack crap? What is your take? What do you want to say to Obama? I want to tell Obama that sucks because here it is, people struggling here in, in America, and we're right here taking all this, and we're not getting anything. You know, even with the kids that's underage, underage with no, um, what they call it, um, daycare, or, you know, you want to work and you can't work. And, you know, you got these people coming from all over and they get a job, don't have no social security, and they just get over like a fat rat. You know, as I was here today in Austin, Texas, you see a lot of Mexicans, but I bet you they're not recorded with a social security card and number to work here. And they're here because the crime rate is low, but let them go to Cleveland and walk across the street and they run their name through, they're going to jail. You know, that's sad how you got that, you know. You you, you go to, you hadn't been in jail since the 80s. Uh, you had a ticket since then. We were talking about this yesterday. Mm -hmm. And they, for not having ticket, you were in jail for that. And then you spent days in there. They still say you owe $2,000 right. from 1980 something. You know, it's now built up to that. Right. And, but, but, but again, it's discriminatory, but the illegals get to be above the law. Why is that? That's the way, the way the, the economy is set up with Obama. If you're a Hispanic U.S. citizen, you go to jail for drinking and driving. But if you're a Hispanic from Mexico, you don't most of the time. Why is that? Why are they above the law? That's because they got the law set up the way they want them set up. Like I was telling you, it's a town in Cleveland called Cleveland Heights. It's, it's ran by the Jews, like some mafia stuff, you know? The Jews run these laws in Cleveland Heights. The Jews run the laws in I mean, Cleveland. Well, that's, that's what I think, because when you go to the police department, they got their own little clique. Certain laws that's in Cleveland is, is legal. Certain laws in Cleveland Heights is illegal. How is that? Two different cities. Talk Cleveland Heights from Cleveland, you know? Different things you could do in Cleveland that you can't do in Cleveland Heights. And then when I really researched it, it's like a whole bunch of Jews run Cleveland Heights. So that's some mafia stuff, you know? And then where the president at when now that's going on? Well, that's pretty standard for different cities to have different laws. And, you know, if, if different, you know, groups in, I mean, like Mexico has different laws than, say, Texas. But Cleveland is one Cleveland. What specifically, though? What specifically? Specifically in Cleveland, yeah, that I see that's different in Cleveland Heights. For instance, um, you could drive a car at Cleveland with a broke tail a tail light and go through Cleveland Heights, and you can't drive it. That's that's anywhere really. Um, like when I lived there, I had kids, and certain things I couldn't do. I said, but I can go to Cleveland and do it. 
and it's nothing. You know, like like the laws for the housing. Certain things, none of your kids could catch a felony. Here it is, a man killed somebody and they still living for free on Section 8. Well, it is true that more elite areas and more wealthy areas tend to have laws in place, kind of like homeowners associations that can be seen as very draconian. Right. I mean, is that what you're getting at? Yeah, yeah. You know, like, I know for a fact that, you know, law is a law, but when I lived in Cleveland Heights, I was like, wow, you mean these people can make their own laws? You know? Well, I mean, but that that's that's the thing about a city. As long as it's lined up with the state law, mm -hmm. then you can basically do what you want. Well, I'm quite sure it was lined up with the state law because Cleveland Heights is a very expensive, you know, it's like a cold uncle. Well, yeah, I mean, it has to be or it gets overturned. Right, right, right. right but Generally, though, the Supreme Court overturned Chicago's gun ban, but that hadn't stopped. Right. So sometimes cities do do stuff that's, that they shouldn't be able to do. Right. Now, now expanding on that, and I want to go back to the phone calls here because people want to talk to you and folks want to finish up with their Ebola comments as well. Um, I mean, you've told me privately what you think about Obama. And you told me, well, I'm a Christian, I don't like to talk bad about folks, but tell us your heart. What you expected, what you thought, what you want to say to uh, the Democratic Party itself. What I want to say to the Democratic Party myself is that, you know, um, a lot of people was telling me about you get this, you do this, and where are you going to go, and blah, this, blah, that. I don't care what they say. I, I was there, I worked for Obama, you know, he said things and laws was going to change. I haven't seen any changes yet. You know, he's been in office a while and he did the best he could, but he could have did more. Like he said, you know, he's going to do more, you know, and I haven't seen the more. Obama gave us a phone. He, he gave us a phone. He's going to do more. He's going to give us some checks. I wish I really could have said he was going to give me my check back. Some certain other things that I was willing, I was talking to him about, about getting like back in the day I had five kids and I had vouchers for all five of my kids. Now it's a limit where you're only 12. You can't get it after 12. You know, you saying I can leave this 13 years at home by himself because he's 12 and you ain't going to pay for his daycare. He said he was going to take care of that. We were going to get it up to day 16 because back in the day it was 16 and you're off of the daycare. Now it's like 12 years old. And Well, the issue is these systems of dependency destroy countries is the issue. It destroyed our country. I mean, the country that I live in, the, around where I live. So you recognize this is a bad system. Yes, it is a bad system. For example, I got sisters and nieces and nephews that's out here at their age. I was buying houses. Now, ain't no way they could buy a house without a job. And exactly. Off of food and what there. did that? Deindustrialization, globalism, devaluation of the dollar. Right. It's like they taking, uh, um, how can I say it, like a big dollar and giving it to us poor where we working 20 times more for just one dollar. The dollar shrinks. Right, it shrinks. That's a good good idea. To Until think. it's not economically feasible to play by the rules and work. Right. For the average working class person, that's Cloward and Piven. Then the whole thing bankrupts, then they radically reorganize society, and then you're putting forced labor brigades and basically live in work camps. How's that sound? It's worse. Sir. It's worse than the way they got it now to me. I'm going to tell you, when they're done, we're going to be messed up worse than that. Nobody's going to be laying around getting a welfare right. check. You're going to be in a forced labor camp. Well, they already got it like that. Like I was telling you, I used to get, I got two kids now, 12 and a 17-year-old. And I used to get 389 But now if I'm paying 250 a month, that's enough to pay my rent, plus get me some toiletries for my house, washing powder or whatever you need. Let's to be clear. You've got to work and get welfare to survive. That's it, man. I work right now. I get $145, $150 a week. And I work on like 15. Well, you know, Walmart for five years on record tells their employees, oh, we do you a favor. We pay you so little that you then qualify for food stamps. So, again, we're subsidizing a family worth $200 billion. Right. With welfare. Right. Who then deindustrialized. They cross us right there. They catch us up. They, they hooked us. But see, Carlos Slim, do you know who made almost all the money off the Obama phone contracts? Yeah. You just named The richest man in the world. Yeah, the Lebanese Mexican. He's, he's right. not even Mexican. The point is, is that I mean, I'm not going to get into who he really is, folks. He owns the New York Times, but let me tell you, he's El Hefe. Yeah. When you get up to super El Hefe level, you're not called Don Corleone. You, you know, you're called a respected man. Right. Let me tell you, he's in it all. Mm -hmm. and he made money off the Obama phone. Obama didn't give you a phone because he cared about you. He wanted you to think he did. Right. He gave you a phone and paid Carlos Slim three times what it was worth to get the phones. Right. Carlos Slim got my money.
Oh, okay. You understand? That's what they did. Because mm -hmm. Carlos Slim runs the show and is worth hundreds of billions. Right. And 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 the way I put it in, like I was... And by the way, the media was like, Carlos Slim thinks you should only have to work three days a week. Isn't he nice? And then you read the sub-headlines until you're 80 years old. Right. You're not going to be able to retire now, but don't worry, you're going to love having to work till you're 80. Right. Isn't he a humanitarian? <laughs> Carlos Slim... Meeting with Bill Gates, who's a top eugenicist, he's going to let you work till you're 80. Isn't he nice? No, nah, he ain't nice. What the newspaper said he was. No, nah, he ain't nice. That ain't nice at all. I'm like 50. How long it's going to last? I can't well, work. Well, Carlos said. Mm hmm He cares about you. That's why he gets all these monopolies on telecoms and oil and money going through banks. Who do you think really runs Mexico? He does. He's a nice man, isn't he? No. Well, he's taking care of those people down there, isn't he? No. Half of Mexico City living in cardboard boxes? No. He's got hundreds of billions of dollars and no, Swiss no, palaces no, everywhere? No, no, he's not doing the right thing. But who got the money for the Obama phone? Carlos Slim. Damn. I think we ought to call him Carlos Slick. Slick. <laughs> Pimping. Of course, you know who he really is the front man for. He's for the president, right? He's a front man for the big banks. Oh, for the banks. And they really run the show down in Mexico. They're going to run the show here now. Mm. What are you We're gonna have open sewage running down the road. <laughs> I believe you. they're gonna break this country down its back. Mm. Get ready for it. It's gonna hurt. It's gonna hurt. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Let's continue. Yeah, there it is. Carlos Slim profiting off Obama phones, aimed at helping the poor. Look, he looks like a, such a nice man, doesn't he? Mm. That's how they look. Too. He cares about the children. No, he's out for the dollar. He's all for power. Uh, good buddies with Bill Gates. <laughs> you know what that means. That's him right there, right? He cares about you. That's him picture. Yeah, George Soros cares about you, too. No. You know what George Soros did when he was 14, 15, 16? Two George. He knew how to find the hidden. Who? George Soros. George Soros. He knew how to find the Jews who were hiding because he was Jewish. Mm -hmm. And he would rat them out to the Nazis, and then he got a cut of the money. Mm. That's why he gets a Southern Poverty Law Center and ADL Award. You're an actual Nazi collaborator. You get awards from the ADL. Mm. Mm -hmm. Them the main ones to get you get you to. <laughs> well, yeah, well, the ADL are, are my kings. I love them. <laughs> Being sarcastic, yeah, They're very nice people. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, let's, uh, you know how they got set up, um, Bugsy Siegel and people. Mm. Nice folks. Uh, let's go ahead. You're like Carlos, a nice guy too. No, he just. Uh, you know who Bugsy Siegel was? His name sounds good, but he's well, good. If you see, if you see Godfather Two, that they have a guy with a different name and plays the part of him. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Nice people. Uh, let, uh, I'm gonna do overdrive here, folks. Bill in Pennsylvania, talk about Ebola and the border, and we're joined by the Obama phone lady. Go ahead. Hey, um, Alex, how you doing? I'm doing all right, brother. What's on your mind today? Okay, I got something for Obama lady. Um, or uh, anyway, uh, Dr. King is your Moses. Dr. King. Did, did, did Dr. Do, do, do you see Dr. King as, as like Moses? No. Is, is I mean, Moses I do. He is trying to, King. trying to lead Dr. Martin Luther King. Leading, oh, yeah, yeah. Leading yeah. people out of bondage. Mm, that That's what I, I think. That, that was for my time. I think he's like a Moses-like archetype. Uh, go, yeah. go ahead, sir. He lead, lead us out of the promised land. Yeah, so what's your question? Okay. Uh, all right, um... Uh, Alex, I have a uh, company that makes uh, colloidal water, um, and I'd like to give you the number off air so that it doesn't uh, hurt. You know, your. your I don't care either uh, way. I just, if I let you give numbers out, everybody will do it. But yeah, tell us about it. We'll put you on hold. I appreciate your call. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, go to another caller here. Uh, let's go ahead and talk to David in Kentucky. You're on the air. Hey, Alex, how's it going today? Oh, it's going pretty good, brother. Carlos Slim okay. loves me. Yeah. <laughs> Don't know about that guy too much. Uh, I have been on your show since the Bush era. Uh, going back to Ken's uh, question on quarantine, how can you quarantine mandatory somebody for something that there's not even a vaccination for? First no, I know. That's the new thing. The executive order by Obama says if you have a cough or any respiratory problem, allergies, whatever, you can disappear to a FEMA camp. Me, because of my smoker's cough. Anyway, you're not uh, you're aware of the two that got on the plane last night on CNN heading back to America with the Ebola. Yeah, and they're flying people with Ebola all over the world now. 
And mm. the, uh, Listen, if you're the, against uh, Ebola, you're racist. I mean, that, 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 that pathogen has a right to be free. That's right. Why well, are you discriminating against Ebola? Right. So they're going to bring that over here. They Man, you mind calling him racist, those... Obama phone lady? No. <laughs> Come on. No, 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 no. <laughs> they say if I don't turn my guns in, well, I'm racist. I heard racist. Him something about the Martin Luther King. You're not racist, is you? No, no. That was the earlier caller. Oh, okay. Was saying, you know, Martin Luther King was like a Moses character. Oh, like. So. I, think, I think it was a compliment. Oh, okay. But see, the thing is, if you don't support Obamacare, you're racist. If you don't turn your guns in, you're racist. So that's why we're saying that. But, but of course, you know, the, the, the new talking point is the NRA is the Ku Klux Klan. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you've heard that. Yeah, I heard about that. Do, do you know who founded the NRA? Mm -mm. Uh, well, at the end of the Civil War, it was mainly founded by abolitionists putting pressure on the government. It was actually government chartered, uh, but privately set up to arm newly freed black slaves with guns in the South to fight the Klan. I heard about this. So when you fight the Klan, right. you are the Klan. Klan. Right. When you kill the Jews, you get awards from the right. from the ADL. You understand how that works? Right. Now? Okay, right. good. Because that when you when you pass the Civil Rights Act and you're Republican, you're a racist. When you're a Grand Dragon like Senator Byrd, the black people love you. Mm. So, see, uh, Melissa Harris Perry on MSNBC would say I wasn't racist if I was a Grand Dragon. Mm. But because I've protested the Klan, I am Klan. Right. You, you understand how that works now? Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, caller, I hear you. Very important information. City of Austin tap water versus filtered City of Austin tap water. I can, like, taste dirt in it. God knows what's in this. This has an aftertaste. Tastes like Austin water? Yeah, it does. Ugh. These people just sampled City of Austin tap water straight from the faucet. Next, we had them try a sample of tap water filtered through the ProPure G2.0 filtration system. I call it H2O. That one is better. Tastes like nothing. Yep, I know what good water tastes like. It's good water. Most tap water contains added substances like fluoride, Chlorine, Monsanto's deadly pesticide, glyphosate, and many others. Studies prove that these substances are linked to an assortment of major health issues, including tooth decay, lowered IQ, and even cancer. It tastes like you're drinking out of the lake when you're drinking tap water. It has uh, that uh, processed flavor to it. The ProPure G2.0 filtration system removes these deadly substances and many more, leaving only fresh tasting, deliciously clean water. Okay, this is very tasty. It's good water. Refreshing. It's good. <laughs> Go to InfoWarsStore.com today. Use promo code WATER and save 10% off your ProPure purchase. Again, that's InfoWarsStore.com or call 1-888-253-3139.